The Emo Social Club has been reviewing classic, iconic, legendary albums from the past 20 or so odd years. And we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep talking about records that have changed the game, that have changed how we've lived our lives, have changed our brain chemistry, if you will. It's done a lot for us, whether it's uh, good or bad. On this episode, we are talking about AFI's Sing the Sorrow. And before we talk about our feelings on this record, Lizzie, go ahead and tell us a little bit more about AFI and Sing the Sorrow. Yes, this was their sixth album. Came out on DreamWorks Records on March 11th, 2003. It landed number five on the Billboard 200 and a certified platinum. The singles that are off of here are Girls Not Grey, most famously known from Rock Band 2, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Leaving Song Part 2 and Silver and Cold. And interestingly enough, I thought that this Rolling Stone quote about the album kind of encompasses the entirety of this. Sing the Sorrow is not exactly a concept album, but it does have a singleness of dark purpose that builds in momentum as the disc progresses. Produced by legendary producer Jerry Finn, R.I.P., who also produced Blink-182, produced Green Day, I believe. Yes. Produced Alkaline Trio. This was produced by Jerry Finn and Butch Vig. Okay. who did Nirvana <laughs> and oh. the drummer of Garbage. Okay. So like big, like 90s, yeah, big early vibes. 2000s producer, produced Nirvana and the Smashing Pumpkins, and Jerry Finn produced Green Day and Rancid. <laughs> oh my God. I know. My favorite bands. There's a lot of like that, like early 2000s, early like punk leaning into more mainstream bands that were getting picked up by major labels that had been around for a long time, starting to get some energy behind them. Jerry Finn produced a lot of those. So Green Day, Blink, Alkaline Trio, and AFI. Jerry Finn, legendary producer. And uh, I'll talk more about him later. Oh. I got a lot to say. Uh, before we get into our thoughts and our opinions on this record, make sure you are subscribed. We're talking about a bunch of records. Every record ever made is coming up. It's in the queue. You can recommend which ones we do first down below, below the subscribe button, below the like button. Let us know what we should hit first, but we're getting to all records. Make sure to subscribe because they're all coming. I think I've been clear on other episodes of this. We've talked about this before. This is probably my favorite record of all time. Mm -hmm. Like number one of all time, my favorite record. Growing up as an emo kid, growing up as somebody who liked to wear black, was a bit goth in high school. I think this record just was absolutely that like most transformative moment when I was in high school, hearing this for the first time, hearing this album in full just was like, it absolutely did change my brain chemistry. It made me a different person. There is pre this album for me and there is post this album for me. And this is why I'm like this is Sing the Sorrow by AFI. I had a friend play it for me. He was like, I think you would really like this record. This is a very different sound for this band. They used to be way more like punk and they used to be way more raw. And this is a very like over for them overproduced album very mainstream with synthesizers and all these like different things in it. I visited, you know, a lot of the old AFI stuff too that I really like, but this one was the one where I'm like, I identify <laughs> with this album. I identify with this sort of like gothy emo, like this is proto emo really. It's not, it was like Davey Havoc being a goth and then creating an emo record out of like the punk rock that he was making. Yeah. And love for the misfits and love for, you know, these, these other punk bands of the time and creating that into what really became like the emo scene. This album is super theatrical. This album has a lot of different like gothy themes to it. No two songs really sound exactly the same. There's a lot of different things that are happening throughout each individual song for the record as a whole. And I think that like just really spoke to me as a person like this helped me kind of find that community for myself mm -hmm. and go, Hey, I like this record. My friend showed me this. Who else likes this? Where else can I like find my people from the love I have for this album and AFI as a band, they stay one of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, because you can listen to whatever records you want at any time and you can ignore whatever records you want at any time. <laughs> I definitely think that AFI has stayed one of my favorite bands. I think that they're just incredible. 10 out of 10 perfect record. No notes. No okay. skips. 
Not a skip. No skips. I'm honestly surprised because you are not someone who likes punk. So knowing how AFI and its original origins, I'm always like, I understand why the more modern stuff you do enjoy, but listening to so many of these different things layered in and you don't like punk or horror punk really outside of that. I, I, it is like a very specific thing that I just love AFI. Cause I like went back to all hollows EP. I went back to art of drowning. I went back to black sales and loved them. Like I was like, absolutely. These records are awesome. I mean, certainly like the, the lineup has changed, uh, with Jade, the guitarist being like on all those records I just mentioned him coming in at black sales. I do think that he added a lot to the band as a guitar, uh, as a guitar, guitar player, but also just as like the main songwriter Mm -hmm. for a lot of these parts. I think Hunter Bergen as a bassist is fucking phenomenal super underrated writing bass parts in emo pop punk music if you want to say it that way that like no one else was doing no one else can do people are like "Eh, i'm not going to be hunter bergen so i'm not going to try but i think that you know davy and adam the drummer have been in the band the whole time and i think it's just kept up with you know those two as the main uh people of this band I'm like, whatever I go back to, you're still going to be in it. And if you made this and you came from this, it must be good. And certainly like this is a Halloween band. (laughs) So like even back at Very Proud of You and Answer That and Stay Fashionable, they were still very like Halloween horrorcore, even if it doesn't look that way. Even if it's just is like bratty skate punk type shit. Like it is still like we like the Misfits. We like Fugazi. We are still bringing that influence into this. So it makes sense to me listening to it versus listening to something like rancid where I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> this isn't fun. This is not it. This is boring. Well, I think too, AFI can be so dynamic in general. Yeah. Compa- I mean, cause I listened after I heard these songs primarily on guitar hero and rock band too, <laughs> and being more into punk and knowing that they had the all Hallows EVP. That's where yeah. I started more. And then eventually when I completely jumped and I went to crash love, <laughs> And Crash Love was really good. Such a good album. December Underground, too. Uh, phenomenal. Just an absolute, like, game changer of, like, we're doing synth pop now. And it's like, please, please, show like me I more. I welcome it. And then it's like, oh, you know what? We can't do enough of it. We're going to do black audio. Please, please. That's great. Please give me more. I think that's the thing, too, is that when you listen to Sing the Sorrow and you see black audio, because I remember when they came out, I had a couple of friends say, why are they doing this? And I listened to it. It's industrial goth. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah this, this really makes good. sense. It's 80s new wave. It's like all this stuff that like, you know, was influenced on them. And much like everything we listen to, I grew up in the 90s. I grew up in the 80s. This is what I listen to. I make this music now. Well, now the kids are liking stuff that came from somebody who liked this stuff before. So whatever uh, Jade and Davey make with Black Audio is not going to sound exactly like industrial 80s new wave, you know, whatever. It's going to sound like... (laughs) AFI doing this for their audience. Yeah. Black audio rules. Black audio fuck. Black audio is so good. I'm glad we're both on the same page there. Oh, dude, there, there's not a thing that Davey has done. Dream hey, car. Dream car. Oh my God. There's not a thing that, candy is so good. There's not a thing that Davey has done that I'm like not uh, you know, a fan of. Like, love Davey. And this will this will make sense in the next episode. You know, he played the the main character in the American Idiot musical. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. I never so even saw that, the musical. Me neither, but he sang all, right, all those so songs that. too. Stay tuned. I hadn't listened to this in a really long time. And obviously I knew the singles. So I was like, okay, we're getting through those. This is this is the Halloween band. This is the Halloween officially, band. Officially, like the this is the officially Halloween band of all time because this <laughs> incorporates horror punk, regular punk, this industrial new wave, goth aesthetic while then fine tuning it into emo in the mainstream. Yep. Great strategic move, by the way. Before it existed. Before it existed. Made it. Yeah. Created it. I don't know how to put this necessarily into words, but this sound reminds me so much of this particular point in time where it was granted a small box. Like it was a very specific niche of this sound that was so carefully crafted to world build within you. Yes. And to have all these gothic elements that you got in bands like Nightwish with Temptation, Evanescence, mm. and then you had AFI and a couple other bands that I remember the songs, but I don't remember the band's names. But if you listen sure. to some of it, you're like, this is it. And it's such a specific snapshot in time that I don't know if it's if it could be recreated to the fullest extent. Now without Jerry Finn. 
the sound that he made on this record, the sound that he made on Blink 182's Untitled, the sound he made on Crimson by uh, Alkaline Trio, like it's so perfect. And it just, it just is so clearly like Jerry Finn. MGK tried to reproduce it. Blink 182 tried to reproduce it. John Feldman has tried to reproduce it. I'm like, it's missing that soul, man. It's missing whatever Jerry Finn brought to the table. It just ain't right. It ain't rat. This is just a record that I can't believe I haven't revisited in so long because it, this is the perfect body of art. And within this really just spooky overall style is the only way to really explain yeah. it fully that you would be looking for to set the tone for one, just being in Halloween season, but also to just to get get you straight in life when it comes to being in this this uh, alternative culture <laughs> true lizzie my top tracks are everything so go ahead and okay. drop me your top tracks from this record okay so you know i love a good bass a good bass opening riff death of seasons yeah that- i already listened to it i said "Ooh, <sighs> that bass and then you get into this industrial synth too yeah. to just I feel like I'm in a goth club and I've never been in a goth club, but I would imagine that what my <laughs> dumb brain started to formulate while listening to the song, it would be this smoky, not like dungeon, but spooky uh, gothic uh, type of area. Dungeon. Yeah. It's a dungeon. There's red lights. There's purple yeah. lights. Like the whole, I mean, it's a little yeah. bit stereotypical, Yeah, but you know, think of if anybody ever read the Vampire Kisses books, what they ex- describe the Coolsville goth bar to be. That's what I think <laughs> in my brain. And I would like to go to there. <laughs> For anybody who lives in Chicago, it's Neo. <laughs> I think also because there's, there's just this block one right after the other two. Mm-hmm. It fades so well into the greatest disappointment. And they keep uh, with the bass lines. Yeah. The greatest appointment is so good. And this whole record is so good. Death of Seasons, I remember, is that that electronic moment and clearly so many bands like took from that moment. I even think like remembering at the time when I heard this for the first time, I mean, as I say, you can just do that. You can do that in a song like this. And then also being like, everyone's about to do this. Every band is going to steal this exact thing and it's going to be great. And it kind of is, kind of was. I think that moment is a standout in music. The absolute theater that happens throughout the entire song, the full runtime of death of seasons is insane for like what was like, you know, a shitty little punk band from the Bay in California. That's like now writing like this punk opus in that way. I was like, Holy shit, man. I can't believe you can do this. I can't. I can't believe- be- I, and I can't believe that everyone's going to steal it. They also with this, the lyrics in here too, are just so reminiscent and devastating. Mm-hmm. I love devastating lyrics. Yeah. Again, it just adds to the brooding, I'm sad, and I'm looking back yeah. on everything. Vampires are cool, right? Yeah, they're so fucking cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's just so hard to pick like any song specifically off of this album that I'm like, this is how I feel. I can't pick any. Like It's it's legitimately like every song on this record is fucking incredible. It's phenomenal. No song does what the song before it did. No song does what the song after it does. Every song has its different vibe is different feeling it's different emotions it's different like lyrical content the the band is playing something that feels differently every time it always goes back to the same uh themes the same like center you know it's always this like punk band doing like a more theatrical doing synthesizer doing like gothic doing all that stuff it's it always comes back to that but none of it does it in the same way as the song after it yeah i think bleed black is like the most like punk song on it yeah. the most like straightforward one they play that one a lot live so you can tell that like they they love the energy of that one song rips songs incredible absolutely amazing track that you know i love seeing every time they play it live because hell yeah you should but i think that's like the one that is the most like basic punk rock pop punk song and everything else does what bleed black does just a little bit a little bit different I think Paper Airplanes is also one that yeah. falls in line with there because after you get through that block again, yeah. you have all these long, winding, brooding songs, and then you're you're picking it up a little bit in tempo and, and energy. But it still ties it all together so well for you to... It's 
it's almost as if you are reading a chapter and yeah. this is ending the chapter and you're going into the next section of the yeah. book. This is paced very well as a record where it does have movements through it. It it does feel like a journey. It does feel like this is perfectly staged from beginning, middle, and end. Uh, this time imperfect. In, incredible to go from But Home Is Nowhere, big, bombastic, punk rock, like very theatrical. It like all kind of comes out of that. It goes into like the piano, like spoken word interlude which is technically its own song too. And then it goes into this time imperfect, like more acoustic, like building, like ballady type thing. And you're like, how did we get here? How did we come from all of the moments before this? And we like brought it back down and we brought it back up and everything is happening. God, this record's so goddamn good. <laughs> Best record of all time. Greatest record of all time. 10 out of 10. No skips, no notes, no comment. Um, like, like I mentioned, Paper Airplanes was also, again, in that yeah. little block. I think it, it just ties it off so beautifully. And while this is more of something, if I were to tell somebody, oh, here's AFI, and I know that they're not into that spooky type of shit, I would say, here's this one song you might enjoy, just as a through way for that. So you got to get into that spooky shit. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> it it's, a, it's a part of it. But yeah. if you're, you know, giving your friend who's like, what the fuck are you listening to, dude? You can say, here you go. What's a Miss Murder? It's like, well, check out this song. What's a whole oh. Miss Murder? Oh, okay. All right. It is, it is kind of crazy to me that like Miss Murder is their most well known song considering this album. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always, I like Miss Murder and I liked Miss Murder when I first heard of it. But now it's just been so overplayed for me. Yeah. That there's, so many other good songs that they have. Why don't we play any of these? December Underground is so good though too. AFI is like my favorite band. So like, what can I say? What can I really, what can I really do? Yeah. I like December Underground too. Turns out Crash Love's good too. I love Crash Love. Burials has some good songs. You seem like you're, you're hurting there when you say that. A little bit. Okay. It, it, it doesn't stay good forever. Controversial. Maybe. It can't stay good forever. They have like fucking 13 records, yeah. man. You know? At a certain point you got to say, hey homie. You, they you don't, don't play a lot of that stuff out. They do play a couple off burials. They play the good ones off burials, which is good. 17 Crimes, I Hope You Suffer. Good song. Yeah, that one's really good. Anyway, that's glazing records we're not talking about. Lizzie, I'm going to give you an opportunity to say something spicy about Sing the Sorrow. But if you do, just know your life is forfeit. My life is forfeit? Yeah. That's so crazy. Careful. Treading thin water here. Thin water? Treading... treading Treading, treading, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Do you have any spicy takes about this record? And be warned, you should not. Well, I just think <gasps> that there really isn't anything wrong There's with this. There's nothing wrong with this record. It's a perfect I, record. I kept trying to go back to say, is there anything that I really disliked? And I'm like, no, everything's really solid. I, I really enjoyed my journey through this record. <sighs> like I thought, you know, I tried to put myself in the mindset of somebody who might not like this, which is very hard for me to do. I'm going to have the like right, most can't like, be objective. blinding nostalgia goggles for this where I'm like, no, the best record of all time is not the best record of all time. Who could say that? I do think like it is a very specific record. I think it's for specific people. Our personalities for sure match up with this album. Yeah. For the people who have heard this, for the people who love this, this means so much. This is a perfect record for the right people who hear it. This is a, like the album of all time <laughs> for exactly what was created here. It created the emo scene that came after it. There is no, I, I believe this, there is no My Chemical Romance without this. This is, I believe, the same year as the used uh, self-titled. So maybe- That could be right. Maybe yeah. there's a little bit of the used without this. There's a lot of bands that straight up would not exist if this record didn't exist. My spicy take is- uh, Thank you, AFI. <laughs> it's been nice. Yeah. And before we end the episode, Lizzie, what would you say is the the legacy of this record? How has this record impacted the scene? How has it impacted in the 20 years that's existed the music that we listen to? I think long lasting for AFI's legacy in general is that they just keep going. Yeah. And they went away for a little bit, but then they come back. Same lineup. 
the yeah, whole time since, they haven't since this changed record. Up anything, yeah. And we know that that's very rare. It's very rare. It's incredibly rare. We rare, we rarely see that happen. <laughs> Overall, I do think that they pioneered this type of bridging between goth and emo mm -hmm. subcultures, which people can argue about. You have your own issues there, whatever. Okay. But I think when you bridge it, you create more of a diversification of community where then you can have this new type of sound take form. And then you get a bunch of different iterations from a variety of artists that perhaps would never have made this music before created this again, little niche area of sound we didn't even know existed or could exist during this time and we see now again black audio is a thing and we see industrial coming yep. back again to and in, in this most recent rate wave of new music resurgence i would argue afi is not a household name per se for a lot of agree. people yeah i would agree in the subcultures that it is predominantly in they have made such a big shift and change in the movement, but they also are really quiet about it. Yeah. They're in the shadowy corner <laughs> saying, Ooh, these kids are going to like this. Yeah. <laughs> I was at the tour for this album the year it came out. I was at the 20 year anniversary of it in LA at the Kia forum sold out like 17,000 people that probably all felt the exact same way I did. Just like seeing this record that I don't think they've ever played every song from it. Cause even at that time, you know, they had it's a long, their, their sixth album. Yeah. They had other ones. They had art of drowning out and that album rules too. So it's like, they've never been able to play this album out except for the one show. And as far as I know, they will never do it again. They're like, it's one time. Here you go. Enjoy. I'm very happy that I got to be there and see it because yeah, this album completely rewired my brain as I'm sure it did with a lot of people in the punk scene and the, and even the metal scene, even all that they, they bridged like a lot of genres. They bridged a lot of things together. They, I think are one of the reasons why genre doesn't really mean anything anymore, especially in our, our scene. I think they were experimenting in places that not a lot of other bands were. And I think a lot of people like me who heard that at the time have, have, really stuck to bands that want to create different types of sound, different types of music from all across the genre and just do fun things and just be a good, talented group of musicians. I think it's incredible that this record exists. And I think it's incredible if you haven't heard it. So go listen to it right now. Close it right now. Literally. So those are our thoughts. We, I don't know how to glaze a record properly. I, guess. I mean, you kind of did already. I glazed it, but I'm like, dude, th this record's unstoppable. This record's incredible. Like I will listen to this for every year of my life and, and revisit it every time. I just feel like, you know, it's brand new to me. It feels amazing. The, hundredth listen as it did the first listen so those are our thoughts those are our opinions on afi sing the sorrow what do you think are we too positive i doubt it let us know down in the comments let us know what you think about this one make sure to subscribe make sure to like this video if you like afi like for this video is like for afi it works the same way they'll know davy knows we are going to have many more videos many more reviews maybe not as positive as this one but maybe not who knows make sure to subscribe to find out when those videos come out and all the other content we have coming out here on the emo social club channel but until afi and until sing the sorrow we'll see you there